Thank you for being here. Thank you for practicing social distancing as we try to communicate with the public about the latest changes uh, in the city of Knoxville and our response to coronavirus. Um, and I'm happy to, you all have received copies of the news release and, and the latest executive order. Um, and I'd be happy, you're getting too close, you're getting too close. Uh, I'd be happy to take questions from anybody. I, I mean, I, I said uh, the, uh, the details are in the media release and if you guys haven't had a chance to read it, I can give an overview of that. Um, okay, the, the main changes are that we are uh, requiring, not just suggesting, we are requiring that uh, restaurants and bars in the city of Knoxville no longer um, serve people inside, that they go to carry out and delivery only. Uh, we are requiring that gyms and fitness centers inside the city of Knoxville close. And we are also um, requiring that venues that, um, you know, serve large numbers of people, commercial venues, uh, close to the public, for example, such as many of, many of which have already done that voluntarily. An example of one is the Tennessee Theater and the Bijou Theater. Uh, but this moves from a suggestion to a mandate. And this is, of course, in response to the pandemic, COVID-19. I'm told, I don't think it's confirmed, but there's been four new cases in our community uh, today. And uh, it's a type of thing that I think it took three months around the globe to get 100,000 cases, and it's taken 12 days to get the next 100,000 cases. Uh, so this is a type of disease that's highly transmissible, transmittable, transmissible. Uh, and the timing of this, the reason that we decided to move forward with this today, and I did this uh, in communication with all of city council and a number of community leaders and um, business leaders and, and business owners and bar owners, uh, consulting with all kinds of people. Uh, but the reason we decided to move forward today is because we have a lot of families in Knoxville who've been traveling due to spring break for University of Tennessee, Knox County Schools, and other entities. And they have been visiting places that may have already experienced widespread cases of COVID-19. And we are just now learning through the scientists how, uh, how contagious it is. And people may be coming back and not knowing. They may be completely asymptomatic, and they may never uh, have symptoms, but they can still carry it and transmit it to other people. Um, and sometimes you're asymptomatic for a while and then, and then be, have symptoms later. So the timing of this is to take action now as, uh, so people minimize their exposure, that they understand that the social distancing is a compelling need for everybody to exercise, uh, uh, no matter, no matter um, whether you're young and healthy or and an at-risk uh, population, it's important to practice social distancing. And so that's why we are encouraging that to happen by mandating these closures. Yes. Well, he asked if, about the economic impact. And of course, I uh, didn't proceed with this lightly because the economic impact is real. And I am already hearing from many, many people who are already experiencing the economic impact. So the fact is the economic impact is happening uh, no matter what, because businesses are already closing, people are worried about protecting their employees. Um, and so we are doing this because if we act now, not only will it help flatten the curve and make sure that COVID-19 doesn't spread so much that our hospitals can't manage it, it can also mitigate the impact economically. So it's a short-term pain, but then slower, you know, that mitigates the long-term hardships. And I also, I invited, um, President and CEO of the Knoxville Chamber, Mike Odom, is here because he and his team are already putting together resources for business owners, uh, for people who rely on wages and tips to pay their bills, and other resources for the business community. He's here to take questions on, on those issues if you would like to take some of those questions now. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, well, we are in 
you know, frequent communication with Dr. Buchanan, and I think she and her team are doing excellent work in very, very challenging circumstances. Uh, we decided to be uh, a little more um, proactive because Knoxville, the city of Knoxville, is a more densely populated place where the risk of uh, transmission is higher. So I feel like it's incumbent upon me as mayor to do whatever we can to protect the public health. And I know that uh, she agrees with those sentiments and just has a, a little di different strategy. Um, but we're on the same page about fighting COVID-19 as a community. And um, we're, we're doing everything we can as a county and as a city to, to work together and uh, prevent the transmission of this disease. Uh, well, we expect, first of all, many, many businesses and gyms and bars and restaurants have already closed on their own volition because they are good citizens and they want to prevent the spread of this virus. Uh, for those who are still open, many of them have already altered their, their um, practices. because They're already changing to takeout only and that sort of thing. And, and many of the others have seen a significant drop in business. I've had businesses come to me and say, please, require us to close because then it can, you know, help us uh, deal with insurance issues and other things. It can help our employees go out and seek unemployment. So our goal is to encourage people to comply uh, and not uh, be draconian about it, but to go out there and uh, expect people to comply based on the media that's getting the message out. Um, and if we need to go into more um, enforcement, there's citations and other actions as needed. Could you repeat the question? This is a very fluid situation, and we are responding to things as they unfold and always keeping the public health as our top priority. So I don't know. Yeah, well, I would like to reassure people that by practicing social distancing now, that can mitigate the impact of the disease and the economic, economic fallout. So uh, it, it is uh, worrisome, and it's a big change in the norms. You know, our schools are closed. Now many of the, the places where we like to go out and socialize are closed. But the reason is not because we need to uh, have, you know, uh, be, be fearful so much as that we need to practice social distancing. And it's really hard for people to uh, change their normal practices, uh, but this is a way that will encourage that even more. And so I, I would encourage people to um, practice social distancing, stay at home, avoid unnecessary trips. Uh, and for those, when you do go out, you know, just practice social distancing as you shop at the grocery store, as you do a, an errand for a neighbor who is going, undergoing chemotherapy, as we're helping each other get through this, practice the social distancing, but also be there for your neighbors. And there are ways to be safe and also be outside, enjoying our parks, uh, enjoying our trails, gardening, uh, cooking at your home, and those sorts of things. Like, those are all uh, reading, you know, watching TV, all these things are still um, safe and easy to do, and many of them are free. So uh, it's not an easy time. This is a hard, hard thing, particularly for those who've lost their incomes. Uh, and that's something, you know, Mike Odom is here to address some of those issues if you want to ask more specifics about that. Yes. So you have a question? Go ahead. Okay. So um, Mike Odom, Knoxville Chamber, we have, for the last couple of weeks, have created uh, a number of resources, mainly through our website, knoxvillechamber.com. On that homepage, you can find uh, a COVID-19 update page, uh, which we are updating constantly, as, as the mayor said, it's a very fluid situation, obviously. And so we are maintaining that on an hourly basis to ensure that we keep all that information out there. Um, you asked earlier about an economic impact. Uh, we are prepared now to issue a survey to start collecting some quantitative data 
from our business community. Probably doesn't make sense for us to do so at this point, so we're going to wait probably about a week or two before we do that so that we can have some, start having some hard numbers to back up to see what the actual impact's going to be. Um, in the meantime, uh, we are, as I said, monitoring the situation to make sure that our businesses understand what um, resources are out there, what could be coming. Uh, Governor Lee has requested a uh, emergency package from the Small Business Association. We're waiting for that to get approved, which will allow low interest loans for businesses to qualify for. Uh, there's obviously a federal stimulus package that's making its way through, so we're trying to understand that a little bit better. Um, we also want to encourage businesses to look at their business model, become innovative, dynamic in how they do it. Uh, a lot of them have already done that. As a matter of fact, we have created a, a page within our website that businesses can say, hey, we've changed our delivery method, we've asked, uh, changed the way our resources are being uh, delivered out there, and then we are out there promoting that, try to get them some, some business. Uh, we're also encouraging people that if you do take advantage of curbside delivery, over tip, um, it's a great way to help out. I, I am a washed up bartender and waiter, and over tipping is a great way to support the, the wait staff out there as we go through this. Um, but we're going to get through it. Uh, we also want to encourage businesses as you deal with today and to start thinking about tomorrow. We will get through this, and when we do, there's going to be a, a lot of pent up demand for restaurants and bars and uh, workout and, and gyms. Be prepared for that. We don't want to. And, to uh, precipitate this issue when we do get back to normal and people aren't ready to go for that. Uh, we do want to encourage employees that have been laid off to file for unemployment. Um, that is a great way to do it. That, that is there for them to take advantage. Um, and at the Chamber, one last thing as I've sped through these, uh, we are in the process of creating a resource that employees that have been laid off, furloughed, can load their information by industry and then we will dis distribute that out to industries that are looking to hire. There are businesses right now that are hiring through this, um, so we want to be there for them. Yeah, as you can imagine, it's significant. Um, whether it be cancellations of future business, loss of revenue just from the social distancing piece of this, um, we've heard some anecdotal numbers, but as I said, most of them right now are just trying to figure out what it's going to be. Um, at the same time, as I said, others have become innovative and changing their business model, so they've kind of helped their revenue a little bit. So we're going to give them a couple weeks to figure that out before we actually put out some numbers. Actually, if I could address the first part, second part first, Scott, actually the supply chain is starting to come back online. Um, because the recovery in China has already reached its, its into, a, into a more stable side, the supply chain does not seem to be affected on that side for, as much. Um, the social distancing piece has been shutting down some different manufacturing. We haven't heard of a big one here that has done it. It's been mostly uh, state or nationally. Um, but most of them have been doing, have been business as normal. Um, what we are waiting for and kind of watching for is the bars and restaurants, retails, they have suppliers, they have uh, people that work on their HVAC or uh, do things for them. We're waiting for that to start to impact. And so we haven't seen those numbers yet, but it's coming. We're, we're fairly confident of it. And of course, All right. thank you very much. Well, the, the principle we've been operating under is the CDC guidelines about limiting gatherings of 10 people or more. And so at this juncture, that is that, you know, salons do not uh, generally exceed that. So we are not uh, asking them to do anything, although we would ask everybody to practice social distancing and, good, and, and extra hygiene in and, and whatever way they can to continue operating safely and serving the people, the community.
Um, the city of Knoxville is open and running for business. We are taking extra precautions with all of our employees to give them personal protective equipment that they need. Most of our employees cannot work remotely. You know, they are do out here doing public service. They're out here uh, protecting us, fire and police. And so the, you know, the city of Knoxville is open and running for business. For those uh, small percentage of Knoxville city workers who can perform their duties at home, we are encouraging them to telecommute and that, uh, you know, and working on that, working on arrangements with their supervisors to work on that. So uh, that's something that each department is handling. The building itself is run by the Public Building Authority, and, you know, we, they are still open and um, run, open to the public. Of course, a lot of the courts, I believe, have, have uh, modified their schedules quite a bit, so there's a lot fewer members of the public in the building right now, but it's, it's open until further notice, as far as I know. That's a great question. We are uh, working with um, the, the parking enforcement downtown to make sure that the restaurants and, uh, who are doing the delivery, that there's uh, easy and free ways for their customers to come by and park, uh, no cost to pick up their food. I, th I believe so. I think there's a, maybe there's a little bit more relaxed approach to it, but you know, we also want to make sure to not interfere with commerce as much as possible. I mean, this, this virus has interfered with a lot of our economy and practices, so we're, you know, we're trying to adjust and be as flexible and responsive as possible. So there, things are, as I said before, constantly evolving, and uh, the city of Knoxville wants to accommodate people and accommodate businesses and also you know, just be responsive to the needs of public health. Mm-hmm. Okay, thank you.